heat tape, heat cable, heat trace, what's the difference? My name is Nathan Ayersman. I'm the business unit manager for Process Heat here at the Valen Corporation. In today's video, I'll be explaining what heat tape is and how it's different from heat cable and heat trace products. First off, let's explore heat tape. Heat tape is a constant wattage resistive product that creates heat and is mainly used on small diameter pipes. Here's an example. It's small and thin and has two main varieties, the silicone one, which is used in low temperature applications below 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and the higher temperature fiberglass tape, which can be used up to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat tape products are not typically used for residential applications due to the high temperatures they generate. However, they can technically be used anywhere it's necessary to heat a pipe. They're popular in research and development and laboratory testing environments. Heat trace, or heat cable, is a self-regulating product that's typically used on industrial piping applications and generally less than 400 degrees Fahrenheit, or residentially on roof and gutter, where it's used for freeze protection or to prevent ice damps. For residential customers, we typically recommend the HTS-6 heat trace cable, and for more information on this product, please click on the link located in the comment section. People use the terms heat cable and heat trace interchangeably, and that's perfectly fine. There's no difference and it all points to the same product. Now that you know the difference between heat tape, heat cable, and heat trace, I'll explain the basics of how to use each product. Let's start with heat tape. Typically, when you're using heat tape, you want as much thermal energy as possible to go into the process. So you're gonna tightly wrap the tape around the pipe. Please be careful not to overlap the tape or you're gonna get a hot spot right here and that's gonna cause a short circuit or a burnout. We always recommend using a control scheme on any heater system so that you have a feedback loop and can more effectively maintain the system at your desired temperature. For more information on a thermal loop, please see the video on controls located in the comments section. Going back to heat trace, because it's a self-regulating product, you don't have that overlapping burnout issue that you do with heat tape. See these two parallel bus wires here and that black stuff in the middle? Well, that black stuff is called carbon black and it's electrically conductive. That means that electricity flows up one wire across the carbon black to the other one and then down. So at any point along this cable, the circuit is complete. Now the carbon black will expand out at a point of crossing, regulating the flow of electricity and preventing a burnout. Having said that, you don't typically wrap heat cable around a pipe. You would rather install it like this, parallel to the pipe, either in the five or seven o'clock position. If properly sized, that's gonna provide sufficient heat to maintain your temperature in your application. As with heat tape, you always want a thermostat or control panel in your system. Also, the NEC requires all heat trace be controlled by a ground fault equipment protection breaker. Remember that carbon black? Well, if there's a short in the cable and this carbon black catches on fire, the whole link acts like a big fuse. If this happens, it will be caught by a ground fault protection, hence the requirement. Application of product is very different between heat trace and heat tape. If you have an R&D laboratory and are trying to heat a small exhaust line to 800 Fahrenheit, wrap it with that fiberglass tape and you could have enough BTUs to achieve your desired temperature. Heat trace, on the other hand, is designed to maintain temperature in a pipe, not heat it up. If you're running a biodiesel plant in Northern Montana, for example, and are trying to keep your lines at 80 degrees Fahrenheit when it's 20 below outside, the temperature will naturally try and equalize, so heat will flow from the pipe and into the ambient. This flow is partially stopped by insulation. Heat trace can make up the balance, allowing for pipes to maintain their desired temperature. Industrial heat trace is tricky. There's a lot that goes into sizing, designing, and optimizing a system. If you would like help with this process, Valen has an engineering team dedicated to heat trace, including our own controls line. We do job walks, lay out the project with line lists and isometric drawings, and of course, provide all the materials. On the residential side, also called roof and gutter cable, please visit our website at www.heattracespecialist.com or check out our YouTube channel with a whole series of how-to educational videos. Follow them to learn more about how to work with and install heat trace. To get to their channel, please click on the link provided in the comments description below. Industrial heat tape, self-regulating heat trace or cable, whatever your thermal needs, the dedicated process heat team at Valen are here to help. For more information on Valen's heat trace offering and how to contact us, please click on the links provided. If you have any questions or observations about the video, please let us know in the comments section. Thank you again for watching. Stay tuned for more how-to videos in the future.